Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we will discuss one important topic of plant physiology that is photoperiodism. Photo means light, period means duration. So how light duration affects the flowering in plants. So that phenomenon is known as photoperiodism. So we will discuss about this phenomenon, photoperiodism. So let's start. Our today's learning objectives are, we will discuss about its discovery, then types of plant on the basis of photoperiodic responses. Then we'll discuss about critical day length. And finally, we'll discuss about the flowering hormone, which is a hypothetical uh, hormone commonly known as florigen. First of all, discovery. So this concept was first observed by two scientists, that is Allard and Gardner. They studied the Biloxi variety of soybean and Malian Mammoth variety of tobacco. So in these two varieties, they observed that when the day duration is less than critical day length, only then these plants will bloom or flower. So this concept was observed by Gardner and Allard. Firstly, for any plants, if they have to flower, they require a certain day length. That is the relative day length and night, which is called a photo period. And this phenomenon is known as photoperiodism. So for every plant, they require a certain day length and night length for their flowering. And that duration is known as photo period. And this phenomenon is known as photoperiodism. This is very, very important for the flowering, induction of flowering in plants. This concept was first discovered by Gardner and Allard in 1920 and 22. They observed Biloxi variety of soya beans, that is Lysine Max, and Maryland Mammoth variety of tobacco, that is Nicotiana tobacco. They observed that these plants, these are basically short day plants, could be made flower only when the daily exposure to light was reduced below certain critical day duration. So when the light is less than critical day length, only then these plants are able to flower. So this was the first observation made by these two scientists and they concluded that that the photo period has very important role in the in induction or in induction of flowering so photo period bahut important role play karta hai kisi bhi plant mein flowering ke liye so iske base pe hum classify bhi karte hain plants so that we'll discuss in upcoming slides so this is the plant of tobacco that we can see in this picture and this is the flower of soya bean glycine max so these are the plants which are basically short day plants or in may flowering tabhi hoti hai when the day duration is less than critical day length next depending upon duration of the photo period plants can be classified into various categories like first one is short days plants as we have already discussed in previous slide so these are the plants which require photo period less than critical day length so those plants are known as short day plants so plants flowers when exposed to day length less than or below critical day length that is usually 8 to 10 hours are known as short day plants or are also known as long night plants and they require continuous dark period of 14 to 16 hours so this is the important very important uh, criteria for blooming in short day plants they require uninterrupted long nights so that's why short day plants are also known as long night plants and the critical day length is not uh, fixed for all the plants or species so your critical day length hai, ye vary karti hai species to species and examples of short day plants are that uh, two examples we have already discussed that is Maryland mammoth variety of tobacco then Biloxi variety of soya bean and uh, the most famous example is Xanthium stromerium, commonly known as cockleburr. 
then trisanthemum sugarcane and hemp plant so these are some examples of short day plants we can see this is the photograph of xanthium xanthium stromerium commonly known as cockleburr then this is the chrysanthemum This image shows the effect of photopeard on short day plants as well as on long day plants. And this dotted line represents the critical night length or critical day length. The first bar represents the day length which is greater than the critical day length and short night conditions. So during this type of photopeard, only long day plants will flower and short day plants grows vegetatively. In the next bar which represents the day duration which is less than the critical day length and nights are long. So during this type of photo period the short day plant will bloom and long day plants will grow vegetatively. So long days plants have day duration critical day length is on each year the long day plants are flowering hogi or the short day plants hai, they require the critical uh, light duration less than the critical day length this is the second bar but they also require long uninterrupted nights to show flying and the third bar represents the long night condition but when this long night is interrupted by the red light then the short day plants are not able to flower then it will uh, give rise to flowering in long days plants so night should be uninterrupted to ensure flowering in case of short days plants. The next, then fourth part represents long nights, uh, greater than the critical night length and short day, day duration. But when it is interrupted by red light, then it is provided with the far red light, then it will induce flowering in short day plants because during night time, there are uh, far red light which is more prominent as compared to the red light so that will induce flowering in short day plants and the effect of flash of light which is provided at the last will show its effect on the flowering conditions then the next bar represents uh, long nights but first it is provided with the flash of red light then far red light then finally the red light will induce flowering in long day plants because red light is more prominent in uh, day, day condition then the final last bar represents longer nights but firstly provided with the flash of red light then far red light then again red light and finally far red light and far red light is responsible for flowering uh, in short days condition so it will induce flowering in the short days plants and the long day plants will grow vegetatively so this is how the light duration or night duration affects the flowering in various types of plants next are long day plants as the name indicate usual plants say they require a day duration more than the critical day length or relative day length so plants flowers uh, flower when exposed to day length longer than the critical day length that is 14 to 16 hours these plants continue to grow vegetatively if the light if the photo period is below critical day length then these long day plants will grow vegetatively in may flowering nahi hogi agar day duration less than critical day length critical photo period varies from species to species in long day plants also this, some examples of long day plants are spinach radish carrot handbane which is commonly known as hyoscyamus niger and onion sugar beet and wheat so these are examples of some long day plants. This is the photograph of uh, handbane. That is Hyoscyamus niger, which is the most common example of long day plant. And this is the sugar beet. So these are the examples of uh, long day plants. But we grow this radish, spinach and uh, carrot under short day conditions. Why? Because we require only this vegetative portion of the plant which is exploited by human beings so that's why we grow these long day plants under short day conditions because we require only the vegetative part of these plants so that's the reason that we grow these long day plants under short day conditions 
Next are day neutral plants. As the name indicates, neutral plants means they are not affected by day duration. They are independent of the day duration. So, essay plants, which may flowering, kisi bhi photo period ke depend nahi karta hai, and remain unaffected by the day or night lengths, and the flower and the flower around the year. Kabi bhi uh, year mein unke mein flowering ho sakti hai. The examples are cucumber, cotton, tomato, sunflower, maize, etc. So these are some examples of day neutral plants. So this is the inflorescence, male inflorescence of maize. This is the female inflorescence uh, of maize. And this picture shows the part of corn plants. This male inflorescence is commonly known as tassel. And uh, this is the husk. These silks of the female inflorescence represents the stigma. So this is the brief uh, introduction about the inflorescence of uh, this male and female inflorescence of maize plant. Next are long short day plants. It means these are the plants they will flower only when the long days are followed by short dates. Only then these plants are able to flower. So plants flowers only when a sequence of long days is followed by short days. Initially, in ko pehle long day duration chahiye. Then they are followed by short day durations. Tabhi in mein flowering hogi. And the examples are Bryophyllum, Calonche, and Cestrum nocturnum, commonly known as night blooming jasmine. So this is the Bryophyllum, mostly uh, most commonly studied uh, plant in which the leaf propagules helps in vegetative propagation. So these are the birds which are produced on the leaf surfaces and this helps in vegetative reproduction in case of rival then this is the calonche plant and this shows the night jasmine which is the cestrum nocturnum so these are the long short day plants next are short long day plants so these are the plants which initially require short day duration followed by long days only then they are able to bloom so flowers only after a sequence of short days or unko follow kiya jata hai long days se and as examples of the plants are trifolium repens commonly known as white clover then sequel cereal commonly known as rai r y e they flower early in spring so this is the white clover and this is the sequel cereal so these are short long day plants. Next category of plants on the basis of photo period is intermediate plants. So they flower only within a definite range of light hours and also known as stenophotoperiodic plants. And examples are Mycenaea scandens and kidney bean. So this is the plant of Mycenaea. Next comes amphiphotoperiodic plants. So these plants flower with either a short or long day and remain vegetative in the intermediate day length. So SA plants jo sir flowering show karte hain only under long day or short day conditions. Agar intermediate condition hogi day length ki then they are not able to flower. So example is Styria, Verticillata and Media elegans. So this is the picture or photograph of this Styria Verticillata. critical day length it is the minimum day duration which is required for plant to bloom or to induce flowers uh, that duration is known as critical day length agar is duration say day duration kam hogi so plants are not able to bloom so it is a definite day length or light period below which the plant never bloom this is known as critical photo period for initiation of flowering this range of photo period ki or critical day duration ki that varies from plant to plant that is uh, about 12 to 14 hours per day but it is not fixed for all the species it can vary from plants to plant on the basis of this critical day length we classify plants into long days and short day plants so this is the graph which shows 
photo period on x-axis and percent of plants flowering on y-axis so this blue bar which represents the long day plants so it require longer day duration only then the plants plants are able to flower and this shows the critical uh, day length for long day plants then this is the red bar represents the short day plants which require the short day duration short day duration to show flowering and these are also known as long night plants and this junction represents the critical day length for the short day plants next is photoperiodic induction so it is the day duration or night duration uh, that is 24 hours in a day so how these 24 hours affect the flowering pattern in plants is known as photoperiodic induction so the photoperiodic uh, induction hai aise jo cycles hain kuch plants mein ek hi cycle uh, enough hota hai to induce flowering but some plants require many repeated cycles of this photoperiodic induction to bloom so length of day and night that is 24 hours that forms the one inductive cycle so this 24 hours duration forms the one inductive cycle and such periodic cycles are responsible for inducing flower formation in plants and this is known as photo inductive cycle so the, the range of this photo periodic uh, photo inductive cycle varies from plants to plant ye sab ke liye fix nahi hota hai kuch jo plants hain they require only single photo inductive cycle but kuch ek plants hain they require lot of photo inductive cycles to induce flower so number of photo periodic or photo inductive cycles varies from species to species for example we have one plant that is xanthium which is a short day plant commonly known as cucumber it require only one inductive cycle sirf ek hi inductive cycle chahiye hota hai isko flowering ke liye then we have soya bean which is again a short day plant it requires two cycles then we have plantago lanceolata that requires 24 in a photo inductive cycles to induce flowering Again, this picture we have already discussed. These are short day plants. Short day plants ko continuous long nights chahi hongi. Tabhi unme flowering hongi. When this long night is interrupted by flash of light, again this short day plant will grow vegetatively. If the day duration is longer than critical day length, then again this short day plant will grow vegetatively. While long day plants require short nights, means your day duration of that should be greater than critical day length. Tabi isme flowering hogi. Agar long nights hongi, to isme flowering nahi hogi. And when these long nights are interrupted by flash of light, then again they are able to show the flowering. Next is the presence of a floral hormone, which is a hypothetical hormone, commonly known as florigen. So it is now well established that photoperiodic stimulus is perceived by the leaves. There are many experiments which prove that the leaves hai, they are the uh, receptor of this photoperiodic stimulants. A floral hormone is produced in the leaves which is then translocated to the apical tip and subsequently causing the initiation of floral primordia. So it is thought that it is also proved that the leaves hai, wo, uh, produce karti hai floral hormone ko, and it is transferred to the apical parts of the plants mein, and then uh, it will initiate the formation of floral primordia means uh, embryonic flower that the photoperiodic stimulus is perceived by leaves and can be shown by simple experiments on the short day plant that is xanthium uh, a short day plant so there are a lot of experiments which are carried out by various scientists so ek experiment hai jo ki uh, xanthium ke upar kiya gaya hai that proved this that the leaves are the perceiver or uh, they receive the stimulus photoperiodic stimulus and uh, helps in initiation of flowering for example we have an experiment this picture shows one experiment there are short day uh, these are short day conditions so jab leaves present hoti hain short day plants mein uh, under short day condition then they are able to show flowering but when we remove the leaves jab sare ke sare leaves ko remove karte hain so under short day condition this plant is not able to bloom or show flowering but in next experiment, agar is plant mein hum sabhi leaves ko remove kar denge, only single leaf is present. So this single leaf can also receive the stimulus of light and can induce flowering. So that proves that 
that leaf is the receptor of this photoperiodic response or uh, this is responsible for production of this floral hormone this uh, applies for the long plants also similarly so this cocalber uh, plant that is anthium stromerium will flower if it has previously been kept under short day conditions pehli condition ye hai ki isko short day conditions provide ki honi chahiye if the plant is defoliated agar hum uske leaves ko remove kar dete hain then kept under short day conditions this plant is not able to bloom or induce flowers or produce flowers flowering will also occur even if all the leaves of the plant except one leaf is present tab bhi is plant mein flowering hogi so uh, again this picture shows Uh, the role of leaves in the induction of flowering. This is the normal short day plants under short day condition. Is my flowering hogi? Agar ham iske saare ke saare leaves ko remove kar denge, then this plant is not able to uh, produce flowers. If we remove all the leaves except one leaf, again then this plant under short day condition is able to produce flowers. So this experiment proves that the leaf is the source of that floral hormone. which induce flowering in the plants this same applies to the long day plants also next flowering also occurs if one branch is kept under long day conditions and other branch which uh, in which all the leaves except one leaf have been removed is exposed to short day condition simple experiment इट मीन्स कि एक जो ब्रांच है देर आर टू ब्रांचेज ऑफ द शॉर्ट डे प्लांट्स दिस वन ब्रांच इज कैप्ट अंडर लॉन्ग डे कंडीशन एंड दिस सेकेंड ब्रांच कंटेन ऑनली सिंगल लीव विच इज प्रोवाइडेड विद शॉर्ट डे कंडीशन अंडर दिस कंडीशन जो ये प्लांट है इसमें फ्लारिंग इंड्यूस होगी मीन्स ये जो फ्लोर हॉर्मोन बनेगा वो यहाँ से दूसरी ब्रांच में भी शिफ्ट होगा विच इज कैप्ट अंडर लॉन्ग डे कंडीशन सो हवर If one branch is exposed to long photo period and the other has been defoliated under the short day conditions, flowering will not occur. अगर हम एक ब्रांच को लॉन्ग डे कंडीशन में रखेंगे और दूसरी ब्रांच के सारे के सारे लीव्स को रिमूव कर देंगे तो इसमें फ्लारिंग किसी में ब्रांच में भी नहीं होगी सो लीफ इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द इंडक्शन ऑफ फ्लारिंग सो दिस एक्सपेरिमेंट शोज दैट दिस ब्रांच दिस ब्रांच इज प्रोवाइडेड विद लॉन्ग डे कंडीशन और ये जो ब्रांच है इसको हमने शॉर्ट डे कंडीशन में रखा बट लीव्स इसमें सभी के सभी इंटैक्ट है तो इसमें क्या होगी फ्लारिंग होगी सो फ्लारिंग अकर्स इन बोथ द ब्रांचेज जिस ब्रांच को लॉन्ग डे कंडीशन में रखा उसमें फ्लारिंग होगी और जो शॉर्ट डे में है उसको भी फ्लारिंग होगी इट मीन जो हॉर्मोन बनता है लीव में दैट इज ट्रांसफर टू द अदर ब्रांच ऑल्सो विच इज कैप्ट अंडर लॉन्ग डे कंडीशन दैन इन नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट केस under short day condition if we remove all the leaves from the one branch but only single leaf is kept so ye jo single leaf hai that is also able to produce the floral hormone jo ki yahan se dusri branch mein shift hota which is kept under long day condition or isme bhi flowering hogi then in last experiment it shows that when in branch which is kept under short day condition jis branch ko short day condition mein rakha jata hai agar uske sabhi ke sabhi leaves ko remove kar dein तो उसमें फ्लारिंग नहीं हो सो दैट प्रूव दैट जो लीव्स हैं प्लांट्स की दे आर द ऑर्गन्स विच रिसीव द फोटो पीरियडिक स्टेमुलस एंड दे रिस्पॉन्ड इन इंडक्शन ऑफ फ्लारिंग नेचर ऑफ फ्लोर हार्मोन देर आर मैनी एविडेंसेस that shows that plants synthesize this hormone that induces flowering in plants but it has not been isolated so there are some evidences for the existence of this floral hormone but it has not yet been isolated therefore the nature of this hormone which has been named as florigen is not very clear it was first described by a plant physiologist russian plant physiologist mikhail chelakhyan he demonstrated that the flora induction can be transmitted through a graft graft is a union between stalk and scion of two different varieties so it can be transferred this hormone can be transferred for, uh, through a graft from the induced plant to the uninduced one we will understand this by with the help of one uh, image so there are recent researches 
that indicate the fluorogen to be a macromolecule like other plant hormones but it is smaller than that of the plant growth regulators so this macromolecule may be rna or protein which is translated from leaves to the apical tips where they induce the flowering and the it is transported through the vascular uh, tissue that is phloem from the photo induced plants to the uninduced parts or to the apical part of the plant or wahan pe flowering uh, induce karta hai so this picture shows the short day plant short day condition mein isme flowering hoti hai when leaves are intact jab leaf isme hai when we graft this short day plant in the short day plant which is kept under long day condition short day plants ko jab long, long day condition mein rakha jata hai to isme flowering nahi hoti it grows vegetatively but when we graft this branch which is kept under a short day condition aur isko grafting kar denge hum dusri branch mein dusre plant mein jo ki long day condition mein rakha gaya hai so in dono plants mein dono branches mein flowering hogi so it shows that this floral hormone can be trans uh, located from through the graft into the uh, uninduced plants from the induced one when both the plants both the uh, stalk and scion stalk is the root portion and scion is the shoot portion when this uh, both stalk and scions are uh, kept under long day condition so dono mein hi flowering nahi ho it has also been indicated that the floral hormone may be identical in short day plants as well as long day plants so long day or short day plants mein jo floral hormone banta hai wo identical hai means same hai dono hi plants mein for example jo grafting experiment kiya hai between long day plants and the short day plants have shown that flowering occur on both the plants jab grafting karte hain short or long day plants mein to flowering dono hi plants mein hoti hai even if one of them is kept under non inductive photo period इट मीन्स अगर कोई लॉन्ग डे प्लांट है अगर उसको शॉर्ट डे कंडीशन में रखेंगे बट जो शॉर्ट डे प्लांट है उसको शॉर्ट डे कंडीशन में ही रखा है तो फ्लारिंग दोनों में होगा शॉर्ट डे प्लांट्स में भी और लॉन्ग डे प्लांट्स में सो दिस पिक्चर शोज दैट दिस इज अ शॉर्ट डे प्लांट वैन वी ग्राफ्ट लॉन्ग डे प्लांट टू शॉर्ट डे प्लांट तो इन दोनों में ही फ्लारिंग होगी सो दिस फ्लोरल हार्मोन कैन बी ट्रांसमिटेड थ्रू द ग्राफ्ट यूनियन next grafting experiment in uh, this xanthium stromerium that is a cocoa plant have proved that jo floral hormone hai that can be translocated from one plant to another through the graft union for example if one branch of this xanthium plant has been exposed to short day conditions aur usko baad mein graft kar lenge grafted to the another cocoa branch uh, uh, which is plant which is kept under long day conditions dusra plant jo ki long day condition mein rakha hai so flowering occur on both the plants obviously the floral hormone hormone has been transmitted to the receptor plant through the graft union but if a cocoa bud plant is grafted to another similar plant both of which have been kept under long day conditions so flowering in dono mein hi nahi hogi so day duration plays very important role in one branch uh, and through this one branch it can be transferred this floral hormone can be transferred to the another branch which is on export to the stimulus again this picture that shows the graft union between the long day and short day plants and that these both plants shows the flowering so this is all about the photo period these are the references that i have used uh, for making this presentation so that was all about this uh, topic photo periodism if you have any questions queries and any suggestions you can give it in comment section and uh, you can share if you thought this is useful with your friends thank you have a great day